As always, it is great to have you stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is September 14th. It is Wednesday. Now, as most of you already know, we like to look at OTC and penny stocks on this show. And a penny stock can be any stock under $5, so we could easily be looking at stocks on the major exchange. But the majority of them are from the OTC market. And we're always looking for stocks that have potential. We like to find those big runners, the big volume counts in a day. But to be completely honest, I created On Top and Hot to focus in on the catalyst. The way I see it, those big gains, those big volume share counts, they are only a repercussion of the catalyst. Now, it's not good enough to say, oh, they had big news or they had a great financial. Well, look at it. What is it in that financial that made it run? What kind of news was it? How was it written? Did they use a lot of pretty adjectives? Did they use some big dollar figures? Did they offer any freebies in the future? What is it? Because if you can identify it here, you can identify it in the next piece of news and get ahead of the game. Now, every morning I go through the news, every single morning. As a matter of fact, that's a good example right there. That's news I've looked at over the last two or three days, and I have read every single one of those. There's actually more I've read, but I've read all those and I make a judgment call as I'm reading it, subjective as it may be, is this hot or not? And then through the day, I check to see what's running. And a lot of the stocks that I thought were not hot were, and they are blazing. So I go back, since I've missed the play and I didn't get the gain, I'm gonna gain some knowledge. And I look at that catalyst. What is it about this catalyst that made the stock run? If I can figure it out here, I can be in front of the next play. A lot of the plays we look at had news in the morning, had huge runs, come down, and now we're saying, is it going to bounce up or fall further? Well, that's not the question. The question is, why did it run in the first place? So as we're looking at these stocks, not just today, but every day, look at the catalyst, study the catalyst, and start to realize what makes these stocks move. Now, right now, we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website where I do virtually all of my research on OTC stocks. The otcmarkets.com is a business. They are literally in business. A lot of these companies that are on this site pay them for what they do. This company is actually on the OTC market. You can invest in the otcmarkets.com. And all their news is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. So there's just no reason to go running around the internet searching for information. At least start here. If you can't find what you're looking for, then go out. But starting here is going to save you a lot of hassle on time. I promise you. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. She's a little bit better and she's a little bit worse. Yeah. You know, yesterday our dollar volume, which I thought was a 52-week low, was at 1.3 billion. Well, if that wasn't the 52-week low, this is 1.2 billion. Folks, that's anemic. Nothing can operate without flowage. You've got to have something going through it, liquidity, and this is getting really desperate. We need to get our dollar volume up. That is definitely a problem. Share volume has gone up, which is what I'm always looking at. We've had a hard time staying over 10 billion. Yesterday, we just broke it again. Today, we've actually climbed up. We're up to 11.2 billion. So I like that, and it's the only thing I like. Trades has crumbled. Our floor has been, who remembers? That's right, Tommy. Thanks for paying attention. It was 250,000. We're closer to 200,000 right now. So this is really getting bleak. We had more shares, but less trades and less money. Two out of three is not good in this case. But as I always say, regardless of how the market is doing on a whole, there is always stocks out there popping. And I got a bucket of popcorn for us today. Come on, I'll show you what I got. First stock we're going to take a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. It is under $5. This is ticker KERN Akerna Core. Now, Kern did have two news presses come out in the last week. Neither one of them are what I would really call big news. But one of them definitely had what I would consider a soft catalyst, which appears over and over again in lots of news with other companies. And I think that's why she was running today. She finished today at 16 and a half cents with about 27% gains. Now, what does Kern do? 
Well, Kern is an enterprise software company focused on compliantly serving the cannabis, hemp, and CB industry. They were first launched in 2010. What an early start to the cannabis industry. Uh, Kern has tracked more than $30 billion in cannabis sales to date and is the first cannabis software company listed on the NASDAQ. Using connected data and information to propel the cannabis industry forward, Akerna empowers businesses, governments, patients, and consumers to make smart decisions. The company's cornerstone technology, MJ Platform, one of the world's leading cannabis infrastructures as a service platform, powers retailers, manufacturers, brands, distributors, and cultivators. Akerna has one of the largest seed to sale footprints in the cannabis industry operating in 15 countries and 23 states. They provide data to all those people, all sorts of information that they can put to good use. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Considering she didn't have a real catalyst, that's real volume, that's a real increase. Goodness gracious, that's about 40 times her increase from 7.7 .7 million to 289 million. What a jump for not having anything on the table today. Share structure. Now I did go look this up. I went over to Google, I went into their disclosures. I could not find the float. As a matter of fact, the only float I did find said 76 million. Well, that's not possible because the outstanding shares is 34 million. See, that's the problem with going to Google. You never know what numbers you're gonna get and how outdated they are. So what we do know is our float is under 34 million, which isn't a bad float, one way or the other. Financials for Kern. I would expect they're making money. Whew, oh, steady. Look at this, they've been increasing all along. These are the annuals from 2019 all the way up to 2021, where they did about $21 million and got to keep about $13 million. Not bad revenues at all. Quarterly, how are they doing there? They're doing a, oh, between six and seven million every quarter, the last two quarters. So they are definitely making money and getting to keep a lot of it. And disclosures. What do we got over here? Well, their filings, uh, we don't have any filings here. Oh, that's because it's NASDAQ. You're not going to get all the information on the OTC markets for NASDAQ stock. Any we get here is a privilege as far as I'm concerned. And they had a couple filings come out a few weeks ago. But it really is all about the news. Now, they've had two pieces of news come out. And I don't believe we're going to get it if I go here. They keep coming up blank on me. <laughs> we got it this time. Let's see if it's here. Uh, the seventh right there. Yeah, and there. Okay. These are the most recent pieces of news. The one that came out on the 12th here. Cannabis consumer spending titans, highlighting importance of brand strength. And when you jump into that, they're basically talking about the expenditure on cannabis over the Labor Day weekend and then looking at it over year over year. And they're saying we've been flat this year. We're just not growing. And that's pretty much all this information was. So it definitely had nothing to do with them running. But the other piece of news that came out is older. That came out on the 7th. Akerna to virtually present at the 24th annual HC Wainwright Global Investment Conference. Now, if you read the news, folks, you'll see this all the time. When I go over to the news here at this site, you can just come on over here, click news. They'll show you all the news. Well, right now, this place, HC Wainwright Global Investment Conference, they got lots of companies that are going to be there. So all of them have news. Boom, 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 boom. They're all in a line. You can see them all. Why is that a catalyst? Well, I'll show you the dates. There it is. They are doing their conference uh, September 12th to the 14th. What these conferences are, are to get new investors excited about the company so that they spend their money and buy some shares. So this started on the 12th and she is now starting to run. This is the 14th. They're still talking to people. It's online. You can go look at them. I think they're absolutely free. You just need to sign up. You can get a lot of great information going to those conferences. Virtual conferences, one of the great things that came out of COVID. You don't actually have to drive and go to these places anymore. So I believe that every time you see one of these conferences, there's a very good likelihood that a day or two after the conference, maybe Friday on payday, after they've talked to their wives, they go buy some shares. So right after these things, you see a bump. Maybe a big one if they did a good job exciting the people, maybe a small one. 
maybe none at all, but it's one of the criteria I see all the time for catalysts. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. We are looking at KERN and we're looking at it on Think or Swim. It's a free trading platform. That's right, free. Just sign up for the free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. Keep your account open and you can use this free trading platform anytime you like. So we are looking at a three year, one week chart for Kern. And I bring it up because they said the company's been in business since 2010. So I thought we might as well get a look at it. We got a high about three years ago of $13.50 and a low, not too long ago, of 10 cents. And she's been falling downhill all this time. Now you need to keep in mind what type of business this company is and where we are in that sector. They are a cannabis hemp CBD data platform. Been in business since the beginning of this entire sector. They're in 23 states, 15 countries. They're working globally. And all the retailers, the manufacturers, all those people are going to want that information like every other sector wants data so they can capitalize on what it is they do and make the most money. So I think this company is going to get big, especially as this sector grows. Cannabis is just in its early stages. We still got a long ways to go in the world. So this company could easily end up being a giant in the long run. Hasn't got a lot of competition. So on our six month chart here, we had a high bubble of $2 six months ago. There's that low of 10 cents under the 200 all this time. We've had one two barely and three breakouts over the 200. This one was unsuccessful on the last day of last month. I'm not sure why it jumped, but it didn't last long. Came down, hit this low bubble and cupped right back up, threw herself over the 200 and is sitting up over it now, has firmly got herself a position. Technicals, very strong PPO, nice continuation on the ADX. We do have a pullback on the RSI. Now that's to be expected. This RSI is the price line of those bars. You turn all those bars into a line, that's what it looks like. They are one in the same. So whenever you have a dip in the price, you're definitely gonna have a dip on the RSI. Now everything shows a little bit of a dip right now, but it does show strength. And we've got a lot of volume backing that strength up today. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. So there's our failed attempt to get over the 200 and it Jumped yesterday, climbed a lot. I mean, really a lot after market and pre-market. She just kept launching. Until today, she hit her high of 23 cents. And she had a huge fall. Might even be right around the 50% mark. All of our technicals show that pullback. Looks like everything has stopped right now. Everything has pulled down. Five-day, five-minute view. So there's our stair-step climb, lots of activity, pre-market activity. She hit her high very early in the day. Goodness gracious, what is that? True, boy, that's 940, so that's 10 minutes after the bell. She hit her high of 23 cents, and she started off somewhere around 13 cents. So there was about an 80% gain there, and then she fell hard. Crashed right through the 200. You can see she was trying to hug it a little bit here and then fell away and is falling further. And the technicals, uh, they look like they're struggling not to go any further, but it is a fight right now. Now let me back this up. I think that is more than 50% of her fall. I'm actually going to use my Fibonacci. <laughs> in case any of you have noticed I've been pronouncing it wrong every show it's not Fibonacci like Liberace no <laughs> it's Fibonacci so I'm going to throw my Fibonacci in here you poke down at the bottom of the surge or the top of the fall and then go to the other extreme and poke it and you get your lines here now I normally put a line at the bottom and at the top and then I just draw a line in the middle which they call the 50% line right there. And anything above that, if the price stays above it, I'm confident. There's a stronger percentage that the price is gonna stay above that 50% line. Maybe hover, maybe climb, but not come down. But if it comes underneath it after a big run, chances are it's gonna keep dribbling down and struggle to get back up. And it looks like we are under our 50 big time. We are all the way down here. The other thing that that is good for, is knowing when to get out, knowing when to get in. 
These are supports and resistances based on algorithm. It's already looked at all of this information and pre-drawn them for us. So you can actually use those so when it starts to rise, you know you're going to hit a resistance right around here and right around there. And if the resistance looks strong, you know to get out right there. So these come in real handy. So K-E-R-N. It does have a good future as far as I'm concerned. And she is running probably because of new investors right now who are really excited and willing to pay more to get in because they are revved up right now. And that's probably why it jumped. And then, of course, you had all these people back here who have been riding this slow, slow decline, said, ooh, profit, and they got out. You had a bunch of people get out that just felt trapped right here. So, yes. This could easily bounce. We're on the 20-day right now on the one hour. That is a good support. I'd keep my eye on it. Do I think it's going to run tomorrow? No, probably not. Could it get another bounce? Well, it could. The uh, conference is still going on today. This is Wednesday. Some people may wait till Friday to get paid. May need a couple days to talk to their wife. Seriously. And then you'll see another bounce. May be big, may be small. But that's what happens with those conferences. All right, let's go take a look at another stock that has its own type of catalyst. Our next stock here has had a great day. Another penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker ALSAR, Alpha Star Acquisition Corporation. Now, she finished the day at about 19 cents with 135% gains based on the news that came out today. This is her catalyst. Now, this company has always been a shell company. She came onto the market empty, hollow, no business, like a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. They come onto the market basically looking to sell their ticker. They're looking for a merger, an acquisition, somebody who will take over the ticker, normally a private company, and go public. And that's what's happened here today. Now, this company came on the market in January, just last January, at 33 cents. That was her high. She fell down to a nickel, and on this news, she is now bouncing back up. And this is what it tells us. Alpha Star Acquisition Corporation today announced that it has entered into a non-binding letter of intent for a business combination with CycleBit Group. Founded in 2012, CycleBit is a global payment software as a service provider. Its core products include card acquiring, point of sale services, and marketplace solutions. The company expects to announce additional details regarding the proposed business combination when a definitive agreement is executed, which is expected in the fourth quarter of 2022, which is now approaching us. Now, this is the first piece of news, the letter of intent. And as they said that, they'll have another one come out when they make a definitive agreement. And then you'll have another one come out when they close it. Well, par for the course, the first time we hear the news is the biggest jump. The next piece of news is a little bit smaller. And then when they actually do it, when it's actually completed, you normally get this little tiny bump. Not in all cases, but that is the case in most cases. So what was the relative volume around this news today? Nice increase. We went from 2.5 thousand, oh my God, to 132 thousand. So it is a nice big jump there. You're looking at about 60 times their normal volume, but they're not very big numbers. So it is still under the radar, absolutely. Share structure. All right, um, I did go look this up and I was having a hard time finding any information. But going through one of the disclosures, it seems to me what I found was somewhere between three and four million outstanding shares. I have no clue what the float is, and I'm not real sure that's it, but I'm pretty sure that the outstanding shares is three to four million. I may be wrong. If I am, please correct me in the comments down below. So we're going to have a super duper low float with this stock. And when it starts to run, if it starts to run, that float's going to make it run quick. Financials, we're not going to see anything because they've been a shell. They've never had a business. They've never made a dollar. Disclosures, they may have something about what's just occurred here. Yeah, there it is, the 8K. That's going to back up the news press. That's what normally happens. But sometimes, sometimes the 8K comes out first, and then the news press comes out the next day, if they even have a news press. There is a lot of information in 8Ks. They never put out news presses. That's why I read 8Ks. You never know what you're missing. 
All right, let's go take a look at the chart for ALSAR. Looking at ALSAR, ticker ALSAR, six month, four hour chart. And this is when she came on the market. That is her first day. She started off down here at like uh, 25 cents, jumped to 33 cents, had a fall, tried to jump again, and has been downhill ever since. Hit a low bubble here of almost a nickel, bounced up from it, and then just continued to fall and got real close to that low again. And then thank God for the news, we are off and running. Technicals are very strong. Wow, look at that crossover and that PPO literally going to the moon. You can tell we've had a change in direction. That's what this is. This is my ADX. This is a tool a lot of people don't use. This tells you continuation of trend. This has been falling, 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 falling. So the line goes the same direction. As soon as you started having a change of direction here, it was trying to fight up, you had a change of direction here. Then she started falling again, right? There's that fall. Now we have a new trend. All that is going up. All this is going up. And as long as this line continues going straight, that climb will continue. MACD is beautiful. We are cruising up over the signal line with lots of green bars. And our RSI is still up in the overbought on the four hour. 20 day, one hour view. Or I can tell she doesn't trade every single day here. This is today. That was yesterday. Ah, that's the seventh. That's the second. So we've got lots of days being missed here, but she's had nothing going on. She's been an empty, hollow shell company with no filings and no news until today. So it all makes sense. She has been climbing ever since. That would be the seventh. The last three days of trade, she's been climbing with a lot of that climb, pre-market, aftermarket. You got to remember with these NASDAQ stocks, we can trade pre-market after market OTC stocks we used to be able to trade but not anymore your marketers your brokers they're trading in pre-market after market but not your open investors but on the Nasdaq we can and you don't need any special entitlements you don't have to have special qualifications the only thing you got to do is remember to change your time factor on your order it's not a day order the day hasn't started it is extended hours so you got to have day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension but you got to have extension in there or it'll just ignore your order outside of that jump in there and have some fun there is a lot of movement in the pre-market aftermarket hours technicals right now are pretty strong we do have a pullback on the rsi right because the price has dropped right there but all the rest of the technicals look strong Though we start to see a directional change in our ADX. That's all climb, and that means something different is happening. So we're watching that close. Looking at our five day, five minute. Most of the gains were taken here after market yesterday. Or was that? Yeah, it was yesterday. She had a drop, continued growing pre market, had a nice pop at uh, that's 10 20 in the morning. But she's kept most of her gains. There's no way she lost 50%. She's stuck up here. And we had 135% gains. Now, do I think this one's going to continue? I think it just might. There's a lot of room for speculation here, folks. First off, you need to do some DD on PsychoBet. I don't know anything about PsychoBet. We don't know what business they're in, what sort of money they're making, and that sort of information you won't go because they're probably a private company going public, so they don't publicize their financials. But in either case, it's the first piece of news. They're just getting going. The high is 33 cents. It's a brand new company just swallowing up a new company if it goes right. So it's definitely worth a watch. Absolutely. Things could get better and bigger from here on out for ALSAR. Well, what do you know? Tic-tac-toe, it's three in a row. This is our third NASDAQ penny stock. This is ticker SPRC SciSpark Limited. Boy, this was a stock in the limelight today. She had a great early day, not so great of an afternoon. But there was lots of buzz online about her. Lots of people watching the stock. Lots of trades. Lots of people playing the stock. She finished the day at 96.5 cents with about 24% gains. Now, that is under $5. It is a penny stock. All the NASDAQ stocks we've looked at are. But they're also all under a dollar which is a problem on the NASDAQ. They have a minimum bid price on the NASDAQ. You can't have your stock go under a dollar for too long. 
If you're down there too long, you'll get a warning. You got six months to get that price over a dollar and stick over a dollar for 20 days straight. If you don't, bye bye. They're going to toss you down to the OTC and you got to work your butt to get back up to the NASDAQ. So, what does this company do? Well, SciSpark is a specialty clinical stage pharmaceutical company that works with THC and CBD from cannabis. They're trying to make novel drugs to cure diseases like Alzheimer's disease, ASD, epilepsy, Tourette's syndrome, autism, things like that. Now, their run today came from news that came out today. It was big news, but it had absolutely nothing to do with drugs whatsoever. It had everything to do with revenues, which this company is in dire need of. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she normally does 3.5 million. Today, she did 91, almost 30 times her normal volume. Share structure, God, it'd be nice to get a low float. Ta-da, we got a low float. Not quite sure exactly what it is, but it's got to be under the outstanding shares of 3 million. Now, they give us a float down here of 2.2 million. That might be right. I don't know. It's a little outdated. But in either case, anything under 3 million is acceptable to me. Financials. Well, this is where it gets weird. They're on the NASDAQ. They're in business. They should be making some money. There's four years of zilch nothing on the board and quarterly is just as bad like they've never been here what is going on so this is definitely going to make today's news relevant disclosures all right uh everything looks good up top and no new filings here no nothing since uh well the last week of last month so let's jump on over here to the news and see what we got that's all outdated news that's from 2021 and there we go, right there. SciSpark enters agreement to acquire Wellution, top seller of American food supplements and cosmetic brands on Amazon for $20 million. Here's the news. They tell us that SciSpark Limited is a specialty clinical stage pharmaceutical company focusing on the development of therapies to treat disorders of the central nervous system. Today, they announced the signing of a definitive agreement with Mayor Havitt MRM Holdings and Management LTD to acquire its rights to purchase Wellution, a top seller Amazon Marketplace account, American food supplements and cosmetic brand trademark. The company has established a whole new subsidiary called SciSpark Nutraceuticals to hold the new assets. Wellution sells dozens of hemp-based, top-ranked products including hemp gummies, hemp oil capsules, hemp gel, hemp cream, detox pills, height pills, <laughs> antibacterial creams, anti-aging creams, among other beauty and hair treatment products that are all manufactured in the United States. Wellution offers eight variations of natural hemp candy supplements under two parent ASINs on Amazon that are differentiated by their hemp oil potency. The leading parent ASIN that was launched in 2019 has received over 26,500 reviews and is consistently ranked as the number one bestseller in its category. In total, the brand has over 40,000 product reviews, most of which are four and five star reviews. In addition to purchasing the brand, SciSpark will enter a management agreement and receive the option to expand the brand to additional territories such as Europe, as well as a 12-month distribution agreement with a minimum initial order by the distributor for $100,000 of the brand's products. Upon closing, which is subject to certain conditions and expected to be completed within the next 30 days. So they've actually signed this. And they're sticking with what they're doing. They are working in cannabis, THC and CBD, but they're trying to make drugs. These aren't drugs. Consume responsibly, but consume legally. So we've got lots of products here on Amazon with a a uh, company that's already established on Amazon as a number one selling product. So they're going to be making money instantly with this. Let's go take a look at the charts and see what it looks like. 
SPRC, six month, four hour chart. She has been falling the entire time. She had a high bubble six months ago of $7.09 and maybe a week ago we hit a low of 61 cents. And even though she has been falling all this time, she's had plenty of days to be making money. There's lots of green spikes in there. And I was looking at some of these and most of them correlate to news. Matter of fact, this one right here, August 24th, they had a news press come out. You can see the nice bounce. I learned something. This company's involved with psilocybin. This news press was about how they can help people who are addicted to cocaine by using psilocybin. We're talking about LSD. That's completely different than THC and CBD, not even the same sector. As a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, psilocybin gets a lot more respect than THC does. Why? I think it has to do with the money factor. There's a lot of drugs in FDA going through trials right now for THC and CBD, but they're dragging their feet on them. While psilocybin is just flying through there, they're getting fast tracked. I think it's because CBD and THC drugs are gonna be relatively cheap. Nobody's gonna get rich off of them. With psilocybin, you can literally sell a few molecules for a couple hundred dollars and have your customers come in a few times a month for their therapy. People are gonna get rich off psilocybin, so that's a big plus for this company. Today's news, another bounce. This company likes to bounce on her news. And you can see, once she got above that 50, just like here, look how big those bars get. She punched a hole through that 200-day SMA, got an arm through it, but couldn't crawl through it, and it's fallen back. And we're hoping she's gonna put another punch onto that 200, make a hole big enough to get on top. As I said, lots of volume today. PPO is strong, MACD is strong, but they show a tendency of pulling back right now and the RSI has fallen. There was a huge drop today. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, so most of her gains were pre-market again and she hit her high pretty early, 10 o'clock. 10 in the morning, she hit her high. I always say 10, 10.05, you're gonna see a little dip in the market. Maybe it'll continue, maybe it'll fall. But rather than wait to see what it decides, just get out at 10 o'clock and take your gains. And after 10, it was all downhill from there. Definitely looks like she's lost more than 50%, but she's landed on her 20-day SMA, and it looks like she's bouncing off of it right now. Our technicals, eh, they look like they're still falling, actually. Five-day, five-minute. Lots of gain pre-markets. These NASDAQ stocks do like to trade early morning. We had a jump from about 80 cents yesterday's close to $1.45 today. So you had about 80% gains and then she fell hard. And she is under the 200 now and it looks like she's consolidating and may give another check to going up. But it's tough to tell. All the technicals are right in the middle right now. But this has just happened. They just got this company. The company on Amazon is already making money. We just don't know how much. How much are they making? That's what we need to see. The financials need to be released. And when we get them, I'm sure this is gonna move up because they're making zilch right now. So keep your eye on SPRC, especially the news. Well, if you still got an appetite, I got a few more stocks to share with you. I accumulate a lot of them through the day and I have to decide which ones I'm gonna share with you in these videos. But rather than just waste my DD, I'm gonna give you the tickers and the catalyst for a few more stocks that I was watching today. This one here, G-O-C-O-F, Go Metals Core, we did look at yesterday. This is a mining company that came out with news yesterday, they had nothing today. But the news yesterday, and I'm paraphrasing, said that our Quebec copper and nickel mine has hit the mother load. And it took off, folks. 358,000% gains. You heard me right. And today, she just got a mere 42%. But hey, those are free gains that you can cash in on. You may want to keep your eye on this stock to see if she does anything more. Another one I was watching today is NUMD, New Med Plus. Finished the day at 0 .0277 with about 59% gains. Now this had a soft catalyst. A lot of people overlooked this one. They changed their management overnight. They tell us here that on September 12th, 2022, Jeffrey L. Robbins resigned as the president, chief executive officer, director, and chairman of the board. Also, Dr. Brett J. Earl resigned as a director. 
None of these individuals had any disputes with the company. The corporation has now appointed Mr. William Hayde as the president, chief executive officer, director, and chairman of the board. And supposedly, this guy has a reputation. And this went over a lot of people's heads. Who would think anything about this? The filing came out overnight. It was there this morning, and boom, the stock took off. Another piece of news that came out today that had a stock running, this is MGTI, MGT Capital Investments. Finished today at a brilliant buy price, a penny. You buy it at a penny, it hits just two cents. You've doubled your money, 100% gains, just that quick. She had almost 54% gains today on the news of a merger. Bit5, LLC, and MGT Capital announced letter of intent to merge. The combined entity would become significant player in the Bitcoin mining infrastructure. And the last one I was looking at, <laughs> it jumped for adverse news. I'm telling you what. This is RIINF Braveheart Resources. Finished the day at about seven cents with 82% gains. And it's silly. Look at the news here, folks. Braveheart Resources announced today that the company is not aware of any undisclosed material information that might be contributing to the recent decline in the company's share price. And when you look at the chart, it's been falling for days. So they come out with this news, and the rest of the news here is just telling us what they're doing and what they're not doing, showing us that nothing has changed. It's just the same old, same old. Well, putting that out, the stock jumped 81%. I guess when you tell everybody everything's okay, that's good enough. <laughs> so there is a variety of stocks running for a variety of reasons. Like I said, folks, Catalyst is what is primary to focus on. Those big gains, the big volume days, those are all because of the Catalyst. And when you can realize which Catalysts have stocks moving, you can get ahead of the game. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.